He was known as the wickedest man on earth. He bought this house purely to conjure demons. And what he's left behind in here have tortured the many people who've lived here over the years. Bonneskin House on the shores of Loch Ness was owned in the 19th century by Alistair Crowley, who claimed to have summoned demons there. I think pretty much everyone who's volunteered has, has seen this dog uh, at one wow. point. This is the room that Alistair Crowley performed his rituals in. Do you know Alistair? It's like three claw marks on my foot. This building behind me is a place of legends from Victorian magicians of the occult, rock star lifestyles, as well as a curse, suicide, and many ghosts that are said to haunt Burleskin House. And tonight, we're going inside. In 1899, the renowned Victorian occultist Alistair Crowley bought this former hunting lodge for twice its asking fee, as he believed it was an ideal location to perform his dark rituals on a remote hillside overlooking Loch Ness. The house itself was said to be built on the site of a church fire that killed several members of its congregation, an act believed to have been done deliberately by two Satanists acting out revenge after being banished from Inverness by the church. Crowley would have this extension built so that he could have a north-facing door, as he believed that this is how spirits would be able to enter the house and into his ritual room. This area would become the epicentre of the house's hauntings. We have decided not to broadcast details of the practices Crowley carried out, as many people believe these rituals to be extremely dangerous and it is known that people have died while performing these with Crowley. They are supposed to last six months, but after Alistair left Scotland to visit a friend in Paris, he broke the cycle, meaning whatever he had opened up had not been closed. Upon his return back to Boleskin, even Crowley himself noted that the house had changed and reported that he was constantly seeing shadow figures. Crowley even believed he had cursed himself and those around him. A lodgekeeper had a breakdown and tried to murder his own children, but couldn't do it. Weeks later, both children were dead under mysterious circumstances. Another story tells about a local butcher who sliced off his own finger while trying to prepare a meat order from a scrap of paper that had directions of one of Crowley's rituals scribbled on the back. Crowley considered the house to be too dark. Crowley soon sold up and moved away. The house was later owned by Edward Grant, a former army general. He didn't believe in the stories and was a complete skeptic until he started telling people that something dark was following him around. In 1965, he was found dead in Crowley's former bedroom. He'd put a shotgun to his head. A servant had returned home that day to find their dog playing with a bone. She took it off the dog, believing it to be a bit of rubbish, before discovering Grant's body upstairs. It turns out that it was a part of his skull that the dog had been chewing on. In 1969, the house was bought by Jimmy Page from the rock band Led Zeppelin, who was obsessed with the work of Aleister Crowley. It is not well documented what happened in this building during this time, but what is known is that band member John Paul Jones refused to go inside for any of these sessions, and a series of misfortunes for the band, including the death of John Bonham and the near-fatal car accident of Robert Plant, led many to believe that there was a curse. Various songs by the band were said to be written here, and videos were even shot at the back of the property. Jimmy Page's best friend, Malcolm Dent, lived in the building for most of the time, and would often claim to hear growling sounds outside of his bedroom door, but nothing was ever there when he opened it up to have a look. 
The curse continued. Many people living in the house have either died, marriages have broken down, and businesses have failed. From 1992 onwards, the building was privately owned, but the mysteries continued. Elland Mansion, once used for occult rituals, has been badly damaged by fire. Bolliskin House on the shores of Loch Ness was owned in the 19th century by Alistair Crowley, who claimed to have summoned demons there. The house was later owned by the Led Zeppelin guitarist Jimmy Page. A fire in 2015 destroyed most of the property, and whatever was left was destroyed in 2019, when another mysterious fire tore the property to pieces just two days before Christmas. Ellen Morgan is a historian who has been helping run the project to restore the building. She has researched deep into Boleskine's past. Now I'm going to put a hard hat on in a minute. We have to wear high vis before we even set foot in here. That's because this place is not safe. It's burnt down twice that we know of. Fires have started in this property that we never been fully explained. It's meant to be built on the site of a church that burnt down, people inside it died. How much of this is legend? How much of this is truth? Well, this is the job of a historian, that um, when you're a curator of, of a property or an object, you, you have to research it. Um, we, there, there is some evidence that the house as we're looking at it now was commissioned in 1809, um, but we know that its history does go back a lot further than that. When we were doing the clearance, so um, after the two fires, uh, 100 tonnes of rubble and debris had to be removed um, uh, from Boleskine House, and that was all done by hand, by volunteers. Um, but during the clearance, nails that were found in the, the, the main room that's behind us here were a good 300 years older than nails that were found in, in the rest of the building. And yeah, doing some research, it might have been a church or it might have been a church manse. Uh, we're not sure, but we do know that from the 13th century, when the Roman Catholic Church was expanding into the Highlands, um, that yes, there was um, either a church or a church manse here. And we know that it was governed by a succession of uh, parish priests up until uh, the 17th century. So um, it does have a long uh, religious history, yes. It is known that the house is built on once consecrated land. But what about the hauntings today? It's talking about things that people have seen. You've mentioned to me that the dog is something that quite a few people who work here have seen a dog walking across here, in there, around the back. And when Malcolm Dent was spending a lot of time in here, he heard growling in this place. And you can swear down, just describe exactly what you've seen. Um, well, yeah, so it, it starts with Malcolm Dent that he said uh, it was a snarling uh, hell beast dog in the house. I've, I've never experienced it in the house whatsoever. I have seen um, a dog walk across this courtyard that, that definitely wasn't actually there. Um, but also it's sort of around the other side of the house. There's a, a cluster of, of trees and I think pretty much everyone who's volunteered has, has seen this dog uh, at one wow. point. I was also giving a tour um, to someone, his children. He was doing a, a drone photography of the building and his children asked if they could come on a tour and I was talking to them and they said the first time they ever came to the house, they heard some growling coming from the bushes where everyone sort of has seen this, this, this dog. And it's, for want of a better word, it sounds like a stereotype, but it's, it's, it's a shadowy dog that you, you physically see it, but also you, you know it's not actually there as well. Ellen takes me to the spot where Alistair Crowley's temple space once stood. We were on the other side of that doorway. That's the north facing doorway that he had built. He had that installed and it's exactly north. A lot of people think that the house faces north, which is a big myth. It didn't, it's slightly out. So he's had that installed. It points directly up. And this was his temple space, so yeah. what would he have done in here, do you think? Um, well, yeah, his, his temple or oratory space, this is um, where he, um, well, he performed several sort of magical operations. 
Um, the most famous being the sacred magic of Abramelin the Mage, um, which is a really austere uh, magical operation. It involves getting up at half past four every morning. You're only eating bread, you're only drinking water, um, and you're basically ab abstaining from everything else that makes life fun uh, or bearable. And you're praying. Um, the aim of the magical operation is to invoke your holy guardian angel or higher self. Um, to put it in really mundane, uh, secular terms, it's a, it's a self-improvement operation. Yeah, <laughs> and just through here, this is another wing. This is part of the wing of the of the house. It needs to. So this this was the site of the second fire in in right. 2019. Um, the so recent one. And then up there, am I right in thinking this was up towards where? the bedroom would have been? Yep, that's what um, was Crowley's bedroom. Wow. And there are many um, stories about happenings uh, in there. That's, it was uh, Malcolm Dent that said he experienced the snarling um, hell beast dog out, outside the door when he was in that room. So the door would have been on this side to the right or would it have been like a corridor, do you it know? It will have been a corridor uh, along, along this way. So he felt the dog. <laughs> It would have been just up there above the, these wooden beams yep. directly above us. And he said that when he opened the door, there was nothing there, but he felt too terrified to leave the room, that he just spent the entire night terrified all night in the room. There's one ghost story here that never gets mentioned online, and that is the story of young Ralph, a stable boy that is said to haunt this coaching block. So this is the stables, the stable block anyway. Um, we're going to go in, but you can't go straight in. Um, what's in here? Who or what is in here? Um, well, we've, we've all had strange experiences in the coach house. Uh, I lovingly uh, refer to whoever lives here as, as Ralph, and we've noticed that it, it makes sense to knock three times and to ask Ralph if it's okay to come in. Generally, he's amenable, um, but Sometimes he does make it clear he doesn't really want people in there um, as well, so we'll, we'll find we'll out. Go in. Is it okay to come in, Ralph? Oh, he's not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Crikey. Oh dear. Hey, Ralph, let us know if you want us to leave, okay? Prop oh, the door wow. open so we get some light. Um, so my uh, little dog Toto uh, will not come in this room um, at all. He will always stay at the doorway um, and then kind of looks at you like you're mad and when you go outside again he's very happy that you're uh, outside. Um, the only time that he did come in here, actually, I had a group of students um, and was, was doing a tour and uh, the conversation sort of changed. The students started talking amongst themselves and I got a feeling that, that Ralph wasn't too happy. Um, and so I was about to start ushering the students out, at which point my little dog came running in, um, sat right in front of me and started tapping my leg. And it's the only time he's actually come inside uh, the coach house, so I got the feeling that he was also saying Ralph isn't too happy. Are we okay to go up and have yep. a If Ralph's okay with us coming up. <laughs> we have got hard hats on, so it's okay. I've taken mine off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Sorry to intrude on you, Ralph. We are just talking about you in a nice way, in a nice way. Yeah, I always thank him. Thank you, Ralph, for, for letting us come up here. We might come and talk to you later on, Ralph, if you don't mind. But you think Ralph may be some a stable boy who, who uh worked here? I can say we've got no idea, to be honest. Um, when this will have been used uh, as a coach house, uh, it was quite common that the stable boy um, did live upstairs above, above the coach room. Uh, the floor that we're standing on right now is, is, is modern, that clearly someone at some point was going to turn this either into holiday lets uh, or, or accommodation. Um, the, the, the reason that I refer to him as Ralph 
is uh, one of the volunteers was uh, sweeping out downstairs um, and he kept hearing a very loud banging coming from up here and so he came upstairs and he couldn't see a reason for anything banging he checked the the, the windows that there was no obvious cause so he went back downstairs carried on sweeping it kept happening it was literally any time he picked up the broom and did something with it there was a bang upstairs um, he's much more skeptical than I am and he came and got me and he said Ellen will you just stand in the, the coach house and see what you think uh, so I did and admittedly and I feel it a bit now to be honest uh, I, you just feel like something's having a look at you um, so I said to the volunteer uh, ask permission let them know what it is that you're doing why you're sweeping out and ask them if it's okay um, and as he was describing what he was doing, that the banging carried on. And I said, ask permission. So you're not asking whoever lives here to leave. You're asking to share the space. Uh, at which point the, the, the banging was quiet. Um, so it sort of felt like, okay, maybe that's your answer. <laughs> Didn't you hear that? There was a third. I did hear something. Yeah, there was a third. Yeah. We did hear something. As you were talking about banging. I was going to say, he's definitely here. Let's <laughs> ask if you, I don't know if you are called Ralph, but if you are, can you make a bang? Not on performance. Not on performance. But if you want to come and talk to us later on, we'll pop in and see you. We're here to be friends with you. We're not here to be nasty or... We're just here to have a chat. Fascinating place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe do you think he doesn't want me to say why we call him Ralph? Yeah, what well, was the have you finished um, that? Yeah, I was gonna say I stopped because because of the noise. Um but um, it was, as the uh, volunteer was leaving the coach house, so the banging had stopped, but literally right in front, uh, there were two knocks uh, on the door. Um, and so, yeah, we hightailed it out of here. And we were walking down the driveway at Beleskian House kind of quite quickly. And my phone was in my pocket and it turned itself on and it started going searching for Ralph near you, searching for Ralph near you over and over and over again. Um, so that's why I lovingly refer to, to whoever's here as, as Ralph. But we don't know um, historically anything about anyone. I'm sorry about this. He is here and he's, he wants us to go. <laughs> you think? Yeah. We'll leave you. We'll leave you. Don't worry. We'll sorry, leave you. Ralph. Sorry, Ralph. It is said that there is a tunnel that leads from Boleskine House down to this graveyard, Boleskine Burial Site, and Alistair Crowley was often found in here. But itself comes with stories of grave robbing and even the legend of the dead being risen. This building with a small window was constructed to store dead bodies inside until they had decomposed enough that they would be of no use to any body snatchers. I tried to get a drone shot of the house with Loch Ness in the background. The drone would not go higher than head height and it kept drifting away in an anti-clockwise direction. An error message confirmed that something was interacting with the drone's magnetic compass. This would not be the first technical problem that I would encounter in Boleskine House. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the Dead Air channel where you'll find lots more videos like this on there. And follow us on Instagram too on our brand new page where you'll find lots of pictures from behind the scenes. But now it's getting dark and it's time to go in and find out what Alistair Crowley had really left behind. Alistair Crowley used to have a, a small lake that he would often have a boat on and that's still there. It's appeared in Led Zeppelin videos. This is it. This is the house that the man who was once described as the wickedest man on earth, Alistair Crowley once lived in and like I said we are going to be completely respectful in here I know this place has 
all sorts of history. Let's go inside Bleskin House. Noises. This is the corridor where the head is said to bounce down. Obviously not in this current state. It's uh, this has all been damaged with the fire, with the two fires of 2015 and 2019. But I'll introduce myself to Boleskin House. My name is Rob. I am just here to have a look and to communicate with anybody who wants to come and have a conversation. Anyone who wants to communicate with me. I mean absolutely no disrespect. In fact, I have full respect for this place. This is the old main corridor that would have linked the bedrooms and the different wings of the house. This house has just so much history. The walls of this building could talk. And on that note, wow. I'm gonna just increase the IR light a little bit just so we can see a little bit more. Directly above us, above that wooden, those wooden beams. Alistair's bedroom. That is where Edward Grant committed suicide up there. It's hard to move, there's so much rubble along here as well. such a sad state of affairs to see this place burn like this and end up in the state that it's become. Now we talked about that north facing door that Alistair built. This is the room where he would come and practice rituals in the middle of the night in this very room where the door faces north. He believed that spirits would come through that, that entrance over there where that sign is. There's just so many noises coming from this place. I know it's the wind, but uh, I am on edge in this place. This place. This house talks to people. I've heard so many stories about people who've said that this place can talk to you. That's the north facing door from the inside. What did Alistair bring into this house? It's going to be so hard tonight to know what is wind noise and what is anything else. I'm going to take a left here and we're going to go into well this is the kitchen again I'm just seeing so many noises let's just take a little walk through here this is the room I can't believe I'm in this room. This is the room. That Alistair Crowley performed his rituals in. You can't imagine it, can you? He was sat in this room. No, 
noises again. At this point, I was convinced that I was being watched. I was worried that somebody, such as an urbexer, could gain entry to the building. But Ellen had assured me that nobody could enter. Let's take a minute to respect the people who've lived in this building. Does anyone like to come and talk to me to make a sign that they're here? in here tonight. If there's a spirit in here, come and touch this grey box, put your energy into it. Watch very closely. It appears as if a dark mass has moved past the doorway towards Crowley's temple room. I don't see this at the time as I'm in total darkness, but seconds later my attention is drawn to the same area by what sounded like footsteps. Oh, what was that? I'll see there. So Alistair would have, if you imagine through that doorway there and then upstairs on the other side where that ladder is, that was Alistair's bedroom. He would come downstairs and he would perform in the middle of this room. He came back from a trip to Paris and said this place was so messed up. He hadn't closed his rituals properly. So there were dark shadows in here. This is quite possibly the most infamous place I have ever, ever done an investigation in the whole of my life. It's just somewhere I've wanted to get into for decades and this is, this is it. Mr. Crowley's fireplace was this part of his rituals. Did he have a fire here? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hello? If that was someone making a noise, can you make that tap again? Now I know what people at home will say, you've got scaffolding all around you, it's windy, it is going to creak. There's another thing I just want to point out as well. If you look at this doorway, look at the top bit there, the wooden beam, the door frame, that has been completely burned in the fire. 
if you look at when you see it which I've got right round which I'm not going to try and it's the same on that one there's a door there it's been completely burned but if you look at Crowley's spiritual door you can't really see it it's intact it's the only door frame in Boleskin House that wasn't damaged by the fire. It's quite creepy that I'm talking about black shadows just as my camera seemed to have picked one up. This is the sound that footsteps around Boleskin House make, so it's impossible somebody else could have been inside messing about. It was captured using infrared night vision camera, which means I was in total darkness, so it can't have been a shadow cast from a bright light outside, otherwise we would have seen it. What I captured was definitely something dark, moving past one of the metal scaffolding poles. Now, earlier on tonight, we were sat outside. I was talking to Ellen, and we heard a noise in this, this room. She was outside sitting on the wall. She thought she saw the dog, the black dog, running through here. I've got permission to go underneath Boleskin House into a cellar where people believe there is a tunnel that leads to the burial ground. This is the cellar. I'm just going to watch where I walk. In here. Yes. Like, there you go, bang my head. So the theory is there is, and it's freezing cold down here by the way, somewhere down here there is a tunnel that leads down to Bluskin Cemetery. Now, Ellen was telling me before, it's unusual that this is only half the size of a main room. This should really go further back. Why would they build only half, half a room down here? So the theory is this wall goes right back. Other people have suggested it was in the end, another extension where where this tunnel was built. It's on the floor. Stand back. Phones on airplane mode, so we don't interact. Is there any spirits down here in Belaskin that can come forward? Maybe put your energy through that EMF meter on the floor. So a very noise behind me. Six o'clock behind me. This corner. Can you put your energy into this EMF meter, please? Just push your energy through it. Anyone down here linked to the Boleskin Cemetery? Make a noise, make a tap or a bang. Just let me know of your presence.
go underneath this. With the feeling of something else being in the house with me, I decided to get out the SLS camera to try and capture something visual. The SLS camera uses LADAR technology, which uses infrared lasers to be able to detect any energies which are invisible to the naked eye. Okay, SLS camera. I keep hearing noises over around the scaffolding. In these rooms. Is anybody in here? Can you show yourself to me? Can you stand in front of me? Are you Alistair Crowley? Show yourself. Are you associated with Alistair Crowley? Oh, hello. The SLS camera maps an entity, which then disappears up into the roof space where Crowley's bedroom used to be. Can you stand and show yourself? We can see you. This building's gone very, very quiet. Oh, I thought I saw some figure being mapped on the SLS in the old kitchen or whatever this room once was. So the SLS, a lot of people think it's all a glitch in the software, but it's, it's able to know the pulls that the scaffolding is. It's not getting tricked into thinking this is human objects. Another figure is mapped by the SLS camera and again, like the first time, it floats upwards as if it's going up towards the first floor where Crowley's bedroom used to be. I want to capture some EVPs, so I take out the SB7 spirit box. These were brand new batteries put in just hours before and for the second time in Boleskin, I've got some equipment failure. The batteries are dead. I'm gonna try and do a spirit box session here in Boleskine House. Oh. Battery's dead. We'll try it with Necrophonic app here in Boleskine House. Who's with me tonight?
say your name. Who am I talking to? Graveyard. Are you from the graveyard? Yes. Beleskin Burial Ground, is that where you're from? I've got a lot of voices coming through. I'm here to be kind, I'm, I'm here to be friendly with you. Can you please say your name? I can hear, I can hear a lady with you and a man. Do you want me to leave? Yes. I will leave if you want me to. Do you want me to go? Can you please tell me are you from Beleskin? This does not sound nice. Do you know Alistair? I said Alistair. Do you remember? Do you remember Jimmy? Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin. Shall I leave you now? I will go. That says go. Something's in here. I'm going to go. Before I go, just tell me, are you a nice person? I'm out of here. Whoa. Get the camera and just get out of here. The atmosphere had completely changed. I was in there and I could feel it. I had to leave. So I'm now up at the stable block here at Beleskin House and I'm gonna ask permission before I enter this. Uh, Ralph is what we believe to be the name of the boy who haunts this building and it's always polite as well if you go into anywhere, even if it's anybody's room, you always knock and ask first and we're going to do that now. Hello Ralph, is it okay if I come inside? bottom and just have a little look around and just get our bearings. Hello Ralph, 
My name is Rob. We may have met a little bit earlier on. I am here purely just out of respect. Just to come and see you and have a chat with you, really, if that's okay. If it's not okay, if you really don't want me to come in, you can let me know, you can make a bang, or you can just make your presence known if you really don't feel comfortable with me being in here tonight, but either way, it would be nice just to, just to say hello to you. Size of that spider. It's massive. Spiders in here. But is Ralph in here? Hello Ralph. Ralph, can you hear me? Would you like to come and talk to me? If you can let me know of your presence in any way. Just speak it normal and I'll be able to hear you. So I'll introduce myself first. My name's Rob. I mean full respect. Can you tell me your name? <laughs> Sounded like Ralph. Are you called Ralph? Did you used to be a stable boy? Were you a stable boy here? Can you come and can you... Ralph, are you the only person up here? Where are you, Ralph? Are you over this side? Did you work with the horses? Was this your block? Turn that off. Did you make a noise before, Ralph? Did you used to work at Boleskin, the old manor house, the old hunting lodge? With very little activity coming from the stable block, I decided to head down to Boleskin burial ground. This is a cemetery filled with stories of the dead being risen and also many paranormal attacks. 
some people believe Crowley performed some of his demonic rituals in this very graveyard. On the way, I was convinced I was being followed. I'm heading from Boleskine House down to the burial ground here. It's a few minutes walk, but trust me, it is worth it. So this is the main road that runs on the south side of the lock. If you're going to look down there, put some uh, a little bit more infrared on, just so you can see. You really can't see, but over there in the darkness is Loch Ness. And at the minute it's 1am. I am the only person out here right now. So it's said that there is a, a secret tunnel that runs from the house down to this burial ground. It's got so much history. So much history about it. Let's just have a little look over the fence. That in there. That is where we're going. Is Boleskine. And this is a bucket list, an absolute bucket list moment for me to be able to have the privilege to come and see this place. There's footsteps behind me. Just be my imagination. How many people come here just to see the the lock, and they don't even know that this. Please tell me you heard that. I have got to get in here fast. Please tell me you heard a noise. I am in Blaskin Cemetery. Let's go full IR for this. We need to see everything. You've seen lights. There's a light over there, that's a car. That's a car on the other side of Loch Ness. So this is the bottom part of the cemetery, which we know has history with you know who. Just get my bearings. It's so hard to see through night vision. I am in complete, complete darkness. And this is it. This is the building I've come to see. Where they would keep bodies until they're de decomposed enough so that they weren't going to be. Snatched. Is there anybody here with me tonight in Boleskine Cemetery? Can you let yourself known with a, 
a noise, some form of communication with me. See they barricaded that window up. That used to be a way in, but they would pass the bodies through there. It's just big enough to get a coffin through. I'm in complete, complete darkness. In quite possibly the world's most haunted burial ground. And you might think I'm crazy for doing this. Hearing noises everywhere. Even before I came in here. I'm going to start taking some photos. You see the flash lights up. Night vision as I'm struggling to find my way. The split second where that flash comes on. Just kind of hoping you might be able to see some of the lock. We're just too far away from it. Well, standing on graves everywhere I go in this place. New noises. You know, I need to get the torch on. Quick, quick, I'm hearing noises. I'm hearing noises everywhere. When this photo is examined, you can quite clearly see an anomaly visible right here, right beside the building where poltergeist attacks have been reported. It is blurred, which suggests it is moving. Yet watch again when the image was taken, and we can quite clearly see and rule out that there were no mists, breaths, or flying insects, because all of these would have been visible at this exact moment. Okay, let's do this. Let's get the app on. Hello? Who's with me? Can you say your name? Are you buried in here? I mean you absolutely no disrespect. That's an Alan Robson. This is extremely significant and sends shivers down my spine hearing this. The device clearly puts together the full syllables of Alan Robson's name. For those unaware of Alan Robson, he is a broadcaster, also from Newcastle. Several years ago, he came to this very graveyard and mocked Alistair Crowley right here. Ever since that night, Alan has been plagued with illness and a cough that doctors cannot explain. There's Alistair's book. It's, it's a thing called Black Latin. Garvella Ariste Revenieri. You cowardly bitches! I spit on your book! What I would later discover when I got back to the hotel will change my perception of the paranormal forever. Are you linked to this building? Was your body kept in this building? I'm hearing lots of people coming through. Let's take another photograph. See what shows up.
I'll leave if you want me to. That sounded Scottish for near. Are you happy I'm here or do you want me out? That says leave. That just clearly, clearly said leave. How do I get out of here? Literally struggling to find my way through the dark. I need to invest in a torch badly to get out of this place. Turn this thing off. Out of here. The torch on my phone function has stopped working. Why has that stopped stopped working? There we go. It's working now. I can see where I am. I'm getting out of here. Thank you. I meant no disrespect coming in here tonight. I just wanted to come and have a look. Boleskin, you're an amazing place. I have nothing but respect for the cemetery here. The house here. Everybody here. Such an amazing place. Thank you so much. May you all rest in peace. Good night. My night wasn't over. About 45 minutes later, I arrived back at my hotel in Inverness and I noticed these marks on my foot. Did it have a meaning? Others have been physically marked in this place and I had what appears to be a claw right on. I was wearing padded trainers all day and I felt no pain. There are no irritation marks around the wounds, so it is unlikely to have been caused by my shoes rubbing and irritating the skin. People often suggest that three scratch marks symbolises a mocking of the Holy Trinity, a sign of a demonic attack. Is this a stigmata, representing the nails hammered into Christ's feet? Or is it a claw shape? Was something trying to stand in my shoes? These are all questions that are literally bugging me. The shadowy figure that was later captured on SLS. The voices. Do you know Alistair? The malfunctions. The following footsteps. The markings. One thing is for sure I will return to Boleskine one day and settle this. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and come with me on more journeys as we will get to the bottom of these hauntings.